Drip legs are the first line of defense in our steam system once the steam leaves the boiler to prevent condensate from accumulating in the system. We don't have perfect insulation, so anytime steam is traveling in a pipe, it's going to condense, form water droplets. And if we don't get rid of those, they're gonna be carried all the way to our process, whatever that process is, and it can cause contamination, it can slow down processes, it can cause quality control problems. So we're gonna look at what a drip leg is and where they're located in the system today. Right here, we've got a steam main dropping down to our trap demonstration skid. And this is a perfect location for a drip leg because we don't wanna pull a lot of condensate into this skid. It's gonna, it's the, pro, the traps aren't going to uh, work normally, I guess you would say. So what we have here is our valve to control the steam going in, and we have a section of pipe that goes down, and, and that is the drip leg. Um, for a drip leg to be effective, we have to have a trap attached to it because the trap removes the condensate that's collected. So the drip leg collects the condensate and the trap allows it to escape. In this instance, our drip leg is actually larger than the pipe size coming in. And that's not a bad thing because what we need to get the condensate out of the steam is a drop in flow. We can't get the condensate out very easily if it's traveling quickly. So by the steam coming in here, um, the condensate can fall downward, the steam can go upward, and we've got a nice little universal inverted bucket down there to discharge that condensate. Let's look at a couple other places where we've got drip legs on this system. In our steam distribution system, we're gonna have a drip leg um, anywhere that condensate could accumulate. And basically on a header, we're gonna have a drip leg on each end because the steam could travel in either direction and we need to collect it at both ends of that main header. Without those drip legs, that header will flood with condensate until we start sucking condensate out uh, in the pipe going to our points of use. We also want to have a trap, um, a drip leg and trap at any point where we're bringing off steam into a control valve or pressure reducing valve so that we don't get condensate going into that valve. We've got a drip leg here because we've got a drop for our process, another control valve, and we want to keep those lines clear of condensate. And we definitely want to have a drip leg anywhere we elevate our steam line. That you can see the steam line just hops up a few inches before going over, but that's definitely going to accumulate condensate there. So anytime we find condensate a problem in our system, there's probably a drip leg that's, that should be there um, to help keep that clear and make our steam mission successful. We've looked at some drip legs. We've talked about specifically where drip legs need to be in the system. And today we're gonna to look at how those drip legs are gonna look for different applications in the system. So how are we gonna install the drip legs? If I've got a horizontal run, one of those 200 foot interval portions, uh, I'm gonna look at my main line size. In this case, it's 10 inch. So I'm not gonna use a 10 inch drip leg, but I'm gonna use half of that diameter. Um, by having that large diameter drip leg, we're capturing that condensate effectively. Because the condensate's traveling in the system, it's not like water sitting in a sink waiting for you to pull the plug. It's more like the water on your windshield when you're driving on the highway. It's being smeared, pushed down that pipe, and so we have to have a certain cross section for that condensate to fall into. So in this case, we would come directly off the bottom of the header, we would tee out the side with our trap, and we always wanna put a drain on that as well. For system startup, we can open that drain, clear condensate for troubleshooting, et cetera. There's some additional piping associated with the trap. We'll look at that next week. If we've got an elevation, a steam line coming this way, that condensate's not gonna to wanna to go up. So we'll typically just put in a full size tee and come down and once again, out sideways to the trap 
uh, with the drain line. And because this main's a four inch, uh, it's gonna continue in four inch, and my drip leg's gonna be four inch. In this instance, we're taking a drop off to a piece of equipment. Um, one tendency is, when somebody's making a drop to a piece of equipment, is to pull off the bottom of the steam line because it requires the least amount of fittings and welds. But you can see from this example, that's how you put a drip leg on a main. So if we pull off the bottom of the pipe, we're going to get all the condensate because we're creating a drip leg, but it's gonna go into our equipment. So we wanna pull off the top of the pipe over a 90 down to our equipment. And because that equipment's gonna have some sort of isolation or control valve, we're gonna have a trap down there to keep that header clear. And here we also show our end of main drip leg. So that main running down to the end of the plant, maybe we're gonna add something down there later. Um, it doesn't matter, we can't allow condensate to accumulate in there. It's gonna cause problems and corrosion. So we'll drop with a 90 if we want to. We can use a T and put an air vent on there if we want. Um, come out the side to our trap. So those are different examples of how we would pipe those drip legs in. So we've got a drip leg component and we've got a trap component. The size for drip legs, we've got a pretty simple chart here. It makes it simple. Um, anything under four inches, we wanna do a full size drip leg. Over and over again, I will see a three quarter inch weld alet in the bottom of a, of a four inch pipe that's supposed to be a drip leg. And the problem is, with the velocity and smearing of the condensate through, down that pipe, it's not gonna go into that weld outlet. A weld outlet will only remove literal standing water in the pipe, and that's not accomplishing our goals. So we use a full-size T um, to drop down and a full-size um, diameter drop for collection of the condensate. If we're larger than a four-inch main, we're going to use four-inch um, for our drip leg up to eight inch pipe. So basically that's half um, until we get to eight inch. Above an eight inch main, um, we're gonna use half inch of the main diameter. So if we have a 12 inch main, a six inch drip leg, a eight inch main, a four inch drip leg, um, a two inch main, a two inch drip leg. You know, the, really the cost in piping is the labor. So if we go ahead and make those drip legs full size um, or as large as practical, then we're gonna get good condensate removal at those points. We've been talking about drip legs and their traps. This week we're gonna do a little build out at the drip leg. What piping do we need at the trap? What accessories? And what are our options there for different types of traps? So here we've got a main steam line, let's say it's three inch. So we're gonna go ahead and use a full line size drip leg. And that's so that our condensate can't just skip over. It's gonna fall down in there. Um, the height of this drip leg typically is gonna be about 14 inches. That is for a manual, manually started up system. A manual startup on a system means when I shut the system down, I may go around and open these drain valves to remove allow condensate to drain from the system and as the system comes back up uh, I will when steam starts coming out close those um, in an automatic system where we want to do it all without any operator intervention we'll use a 28 inch drip leg and that just gives us additional volume to accumulate condensate until we get the system pressure to push it through our trap so anytime we install a drip leg we want to drain at the bottom and in many cases We'll just have a drain and a, and a plug in it, but we can also pipe that down to the floor, ground level, um, to make it more useful. So when we come off the side of the drip leg for our trap, we wanna be off the bottom, so we've got a pocket there for dirt, uh, so it doesn't go directly into our trap. And the first thing we're gonna have on that takeoff for our trap is a manual isolation valve, and that's so we can service, do what we need to with this system. Um, after that isolation valve, we want to have a strainer. Um, a strainer protects the trap from debris that comes in, and uh, some traps have strainers integrated. Um, if you're putting in a new drip leg, 
feel free to use that integrated strainer. If there's an existing strainer, I'm never gonna take that out regardless of what type trap I'm putting in. Then we're gonna have our trap itself. And this is just a generic icon for a trap. On the outlet of the trap, we're gonna have a check valve. And the benefit of a check valve on the outlet of a trap is when the system's shutting down, um, there's no way for the vacuum and the steam system to suck condensate back into the header. So it's just there to make sure everything only goes in the correct direction. We're generally going to have a union so that we can disassemble this as needed and then we'll have another isolation valve. Now every plant's got different rules. Um, we may not be able to blow down this strainer trusting that that valve works by removing the plug so it's not a bad idea to put a valve on the outlet of the strainer. That way we can open that valve and not have to worry about um, this valve holding completely. We can verify that it is if needed. This is a good example of the minimum near trap piping. There's always accessories, things that we can add to this, but this is a good example what to look for on your checklist in the field.